I'm John Bowden, part one of our interview with Wrecking Crew guitarist Louis Shelton, who's worked with practically everyone. We'll have a list, you'll see it as he's talking. He's well known for producing Seals and Crofts, but he was going to produce Jim Croce before that accident. By the way, uh, before we get going, were you supposed to uh, um, were you supposed to produce Jim Croce before he died? Uh, yes. How did you know that? Uh, David Page told me. I said I asked him. I said, "Can you?" I said, "David," and I don't know David very well. I know the other guys in Toto quite well. I said, "Can you give me something that that's not in the bios?" That that uh, and uh, he says, "Oh, I got it for you." And I'm going, "Wow." Yeah, it's funny because uh, I was in Nashville just recently, and and I was having a conversation with some of my family uh, about uh, stuff like that. And that's the first time I had mentioned that in 30 years or whatever, uh, because I had also just met with uh, the people at Sony to produce Rick, Rick Nelson. And then that was right before he passed, you know, died in the plane crash. And then I get this thing, I believe at Warner Brothers uh, to produce Jim Croce and uh, then we lost him, so it never happened. Uncanny. Did you did you know him at all? No, uh-uh. I knew his work, you know, I knew his, uh, I had his album, but. Uh, Considering yeah, your I, work I, with I, Seals and Crofts, that would have, you're, you're, you were, a, you were perfect for him. Yeah, I, th I think uh, I, I was kind of, I got the reputation of being a, uh, a singer songwriter soft rock kind of whatever you know uh as opposed to uh producing a van halen or someone like that so uh the yeah, i sort of got tagged in that in that genre of music uh, by the way thank I, you. go ahead go ahead I ended, I ended up doing art garfunkel who was yeah. which which was a good match you know um but uh, I felt I felt bad that I didn't get to work with Jim Croce because, you know, he had a pretty big following. I was 13 yeah. when he passed away. I, I'll, I'll remember. I heard it on the news. Yeah. Yeah. Sad yeah. thing. By the way, how'd you get to uh, I have a few friends who decided to I'm I'm Canadian, but all my audience is in the U.S. I don't know uh -huh. how this always happens. I'm a 40 year broadcaster, like I told you. And when I streamed an a, a Internet station once. I, for whatever reason, everyone who listened was in the U.S. I'm going, what What the heck? They love me down there. They don't like me in Canada, but they love me in the U.S. So I'm oh, I'm really okay. bad. How did you end up? Is it because of the Baha'i faith? How did you end up in Australia? Um, well, me and my family were, were, were ready to get out of Los Angeles, um, mainly because of uh, traffic and just general, you know, uh, lifestyle reasons and I was working with some guys from Sydney Australia and they kept telling me how nice it was down there and uh because I love the outdoors I love golf and fishing and all that kind of stuff more than anything else you know I mean um but we we ended up going down there for for a vacation for five weeks and um eventually well we loved it and and eventually said, well, let's go down here for five years, you know, just give it five years, because we have a lot of family in, in the States, obviously. And uh, we ended up staying 12 years at that time. And uh, for for reasons of uh, uh, like my wife's mother was ill and and my, some of my sisters. So we, we felt like we should come back and and be with them for a while. So we came back and uh, moved to Nashville for 10 years. And I set up a studio there. And, uh, but eventually we preferred coming back to Australia. So we've been here for 16 years now. Wow. And we have it here. We wouldn't, we, I mean, I've obviously been all over the world and every state in America and, and Canada and Mexico. And uh, this is just where I prefer to live. I it's saw I saw Seals and Crofts here in Moncton, New Brunswick. I'm from a place called Miramichi, New Brunswick, it's northeast New Brunswick, right above Maine. 
and uh, moved away. You know, you graduate, say, see you later, suckers, and you move away, went into broadcasting. My mother gets mm-hmm. ill, so I moved out, out here. But it turns mm-hmm. out uh, they don't really need me. Now, Shannon's parents are, my wife's parents are ill, so we're going back out to Alberta. So I know how you feel. You just go where you're needed or where you're com- and or comfortable, right? Yeah. And well, there was a time when uh, uh, a lot of a lot of my musician friends and family uh, left uh, Los Angeles for the same reasons, basically. Uh, Jimmy Seals went to Costa Rica. Uh, Dash Crofts and most of, 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 of the other musicians and family, most of them, Nashville was the obvious place to go in the 80s. Now, I was just there recently, and it's grown so much that it's pissing people off because it's like getting like Los Angeles. Yeah. I mean, the whole skyline has changed, and it's no longer this, you know, it's like when I first moved to L.A. and lived in Hollywood in the early 60s and and up to the, sort of the early 70s, Hollywood was a great place. I mean, you could walk down Hollywood Boulevard, and it was it was it was clean and family style, you know, shops and all of that. And now it's a complete madhouse. You know, you just don't want to get go anywhere near it. You know, it's just too many people. We'll have more from Louis Shelton coming up in the next few days. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos. Remember, we have a podcast. The links are in the description. You can help the channel. There's also links there and a list of all our other channels. I'm John Bowden. This is Rocky Street Music. Thank you.